Put down your controllers, ready your ears, and pay attention because it's time for a gaming crash course. Greetings gamers, welcome to Gaming Crash Course, a series of videos that aims to talk about obvious concepts from video games using our own unique interpretations. From gaming terms to our personal standpoints on certain gaming concepts, we will be discussing them all. But do remember, we are not forcing any definition of a gaming concept on any of you because in the end, it's your opinion that actually matters to us. My name is Arvi and I'll be giving you this Crash Course. As you may have noticed from the title of this video or this episode, we will be talking about role-playing games or rather role-playing video games. And I make a difference because, did you know, the role-playing video games that we all know and love today were actually inspired by pen and paper tabletop RPG games like Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, before they were video games, RPGs were actually tabletop games. This may be obvious to you or not, but that doesn't really matter cause the topic of this video will focus more on RPG video games. So despite giving you that interesting little fact, I may still use the term RPG games interchangeably without the video to make it shorter. So excuse me if I think a single word more is too long for me. Getting back on track, what are RPG video games then? Well, I'm pretty sure that just the term RPG evoked some games from your memory, like Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, or Chrono Trigger. Given that, in order to get a solid and believable definition of RPGs, we need to look at similarities. Of course, with the magic of an already finished YouTube video, all games are already provided for in each element I'm about to give. The first element I'd like to mention is the story aspect of RPGs, because you can't really have a good entertainment medium such as video games without a proper, understandable story that audiences will enjoy. And RPGs especially need a proper story in order to function. Though disclaimer, there will always be exceptions to any element I give depending on how creative or how stupid certain games have been developed. Having shielded myself with a disclaimer, let's move on. A story revolves around the basic plot that the main character has to push through in order to reach an ending. In video games, the narrative itself won't really be any help in distinguishing an RPG's identity since all developers have the freedom to make a plot unique to their ideas. That's also accounting the fact that any story can work in any genre based on how the gameplay mechanics were crafted in relation to the game's lore. Instead, let's go macro. What do all stories have in common in order to establish their own lores? A setting. RPGs tend to revolve around some common settings. First, and obviously, we have the undying fantasy setting. You can't talk about RPGs without talking about games with a fantasy setting. Look at the earlier Final Fantasy games or Dragon Quest games, the pioneers of the genre. They have those common fantasy tropes that were popularized by writers like Tolkien and tabletop RPG games, as I mentioned before, during the 20th century. That's why we have magic, swords, wizards, dragons, elves, dungeons, and a lot more in our role-playing video games. But despite these abundant fantasy-themed elements in these games, RPGs are not entirely exclusive to this setting. Let's look back at the Final Fantasy series. Looking at the title, we have the word fantasy in it. Pretty obvious, right? But do notice that in some later games in this series, Seven for instance, which by the way is having a remake so kudos Square Enix, <clears throat> we have a story set in an industrial setting. A lot of the elements in these games are very sci-fi in fact. That leads to our second setting, if it wasn't that obvious yet. RPGs also tend to be put in science fiction settings. Just look at Chrono Trigger, having time travel, or some of the more modern western RPGs like Fallout and Mass Effect, which have sci-fi plots revolving around post-nuclear war and space apocalypse worlds respectively. Now that we've had dragons and reaper alien beings to deal with in RPGs, finally we can't have RPGs that aren't set in the modern era. Put your gaze upon Japanese RPGs. Most of the time, we see high school students grinding it out against otherworldly monsters to raise their levels to 99. In this category, we have the acclaimed Persona series or the more obscure Akiba Strip game. Yep, you should totally check that game out. Anyway, based on the story perspective, we have determined some common settings found in most RPGs that help establish important in-game lore and history that help keep them alive and immersive. Moving on, we have another element essential not only to RPGs or video games in general, but to the entertainment media as a whole, the character. In RPGs, emphasis on character is very important since the point of this genre is to put the player into the role of an avatar or player character, hence the name role-playing games. 
and most commonly we have the normal silent protagonists in video games. Like in Chrono Trigger, Earthbound, or even Pokemon, there is a predefined character that doesn't have a voice. The point of this, as cited by most RPG developers and video game analysts, is that having a silent protagonist helps players identify with them more easily. The silence of the avatar effectively makes it a blank slate for any player to fill the gaps regarding the character's traits and behavior. It can even be viewed as how personalized an in-game avatar is in relation to the player. This is usually done through specific actions in-game or plainly just through a player's imagination. This is why a lot of RPGs offer player choice throughout the game despite some not having any actual consequences most of the time. A great example of this is the Persona 4 Golden game. Throughout the story, we are given constant choices in every scenario, despite most of them not having any real effect to the game's world or ending. These choices, however, allowed players to imprint their own impression to the character. Lines of dialogue usually include the nice guy greetings, the neutral or sarcastic answers, and of course the how to be an a-hole 101 reply. But despite the creative use of the concept, it is undeniable that silent protagonists started off from technological limitations. Luckily, a lot of games have been adapting a creator-owned character system like the Elder Scrolls series and Dark Souls thanks to the capabilities of today's hardware. Given this, some RPGs still prefer a specific player character in their games, especially if the focus of those games is storytelling, like the Witcher series, this Gaia series, or even non-RPGs like Half-Life, Portal, and The Legend of Zelda. But going back to the aspect of character personalization, one crucial element in RPGs that help make this system very enjoyable is also our third element, progression systems. Progression systems are simply those core gameplay elements that allow your character to develop into a character that can actually finish the game. Unlike using characters as plot and immersion devices, progression systems offer a more active and dynamic contribution to your character within a game. As the game constantly makes the core mechanics richer and more complicated, your character should be improving as well. This is why building a proper build that matches a player's preferred gameplay style is very important. Builds are basically a combination of three elements that are constantly developed through the use of a progression system. The simplest way of making your character stronger is by gaining in-game experience through battles and minigames. This helps a character level up, which usually accompanies a statistics boost. Statistics, or stats, are then the first element in making a proper build. Statistics ground the fundamental strengths and weaknesses of a character. RPGs are usually level capped in order to prevent overpowered avatars from being made, hence not all stats can be maximized. Consequently, choosing what fundamental skill your character will be good at, or which ones to suck at, is important to any build. The second element to consider in making builds are skills. Skills can be categorized into two. Active skills which allow a player to consciously do useful actions during important events like fights and passive skills which reinforces the stats and overall capability of a character. Many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with skill trees. Usually when a character levels up, a specific amount of points are made available to that character. These are used to allocate or assign skills to this character. And in favor of personalization, there are branches in skill trees that allow skill specialization. In The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, the question asked regarding skill building is what your character can do effectively. A thief good with illusion spells, a mage that can use magical melee weapons, or maybe a warrior that can use restoration spells. Skills give purpose to what stats can actually do through in-game actions made available to the player. The third element to consider for making builds are equipment. Equipment is a vital element in RPGs and they usually reinforce the effectiveness of stats and skills. Weapons define damage, making active skills more effective, armor reinforces your stats and passive skills, and consumables aid survivability. Equipment also helps character personalization since the character is not only identified through their face but how they generally look like as a whole. Combining these three elements, stats, skills, and equipment, we have something called a build. Besides overall in-game effectiveness, builds allow players to have more control on the identity of their character, which is why builds are usually unique to a specific player. Though in this day and age, that's not necessarily true anymore for certain reasons. Another element usually found in RPGs are quests. Quests have become a trope in RPG games where story progression is divided through quests. And that's about it for this one. We have our final RPG element, and the major gameplay mechanic of many RPG video games, combat. And yes, I do realize that some RPGs are dedicated, or at least beatable without doing any real fighting. Looking at you Skyrim, most RPGs are heavily focused on their combat mechanics. Typically, we can divide RPGs into two categories, using combat mechanics alone. First, we have Western RPGs, which adapt an action-oriented combat style. 
basically you the player can move your character in real time. You can move your character in all directions, attack an enemy unit at will. This combat mechanic emphasizes player skill, focusing how good you are at dodging hits manually and striking enemies mano o mano. Western RPGs like Skyrim emphasize brute force while a game like Dark Souls emphasizes timing your attacks and dodges. It's all a matter of player skill for this category. For the second category, we have the Eastern role-playing games more popularly recognized as Japanese RPGs or JRPGs. This RPG is typically focused on strategic skill, where combat emphasizes thinking about your actions carefully rather than heading straight into battle. This means that turn-based style combat and the like are more akin to this RPG category. Basically, you have a set of two groups, the enemies, and a group of characters that are allied to your player character, called the party. These two groups then take turns doing actions like attacking and healing, usually determining action order through the speed stat. Once an ally's turn comes up, you, the player, will have to pick an action for that unit while all other characters and enemies wait for you. The game basically pauses itself. It's that simple. You get to think about what actions fit the situation best without the pressure of time. The early Final Fantasy games and Pokemon demonstrate this strategic combat style. Now that we've laid out these similar elements found in most RPGs, what then? With everything I have said, is that really enough to define an RPG? I mean, I've said so much stuff this past few minutes, but have I given you guys a substantial definition to what an RPG is? We can be confidently sure of one thing about RPGs at this point. RPGs emphasize character immersion into the game world through the personalization mechanics found in most elements. RPGs are games that allow players to, surprise surprise, roleplay. But one thing I'm even more sure of right now is that this definition isn't enough. Yes, RPGs are usually fantasy level up turn based types of games that allows a player to identify with his character or whatnot, but there's still more to it than that. RPGs are interesting because there are so many possibilities due to its potential as a video game genre. Grounding RPGs to this set of elements definitely wouldn't be giving it justice. We still haven't talked about Final Fantasy X2. Ten two? X2? I don't know. With real combat mechanics akin to a turn based RPG or the Tale series that seem more like a fighting game than a JRPG, or those other RPG subgenres that deserve a video of their own. Well, these are topics for a different day. For now, I leave you with this. RPGs aren't that simple. If developers get creative enough, RPGs will transcend the descriptions we've laid out here today. And that concludes our gaming crash course. Learn hard, game harder. Dismissed. Hey, you watched through the end. Kudos to you. You really liked it, huh? Well, we will do our best to bring crash courses to you here in our channel. So for the meantime, you give your thoughts in the comment section below. Oh, and subscribe. That makes it easier for you to find our videos. Well then, see you.